Hear me well? Yeah. So last fall she had a solo show and we did a, an exhibition catalog when I was thinking about who should write the essay for the show, I immediately thought about Dr. Norma Elia Cantu uh, because she knew it all and she's going to talk about a little bit more about that and, and you know they're both from Laredo and so what are the chances, right? So. Norma, I was so pleased when Norma accepted, right? And um, I want to start just to introduce briefly Eto uh, properly. Um, <laughs> so uh, many as you know, uh, Eto was born in Laredo and graduated from UT Austin. She lived in Mexico City and other places, but San Antonio has been home for several years. Uh, her practice is informed by a strong conceptual base and encompasses a variety of expressions through painting, installation, photography, and text. She spotlights instances of clarity and that flee between the comings and goings of daily life. Time is an important theme of her obru, as well as the perception of space. So, Eto, would you like to... Oh, yeah. Oh, here. So thank you for the introduction and thank you Norma for doing the uh, intro to the catalog. It made, it made me cry, uh, but in a good way. In a good, I, I like to cry from time to time. So, uh, I, and this is my work here. Uh, I often use uh, text or look for text and oftentimes I look for text in the streets. I find myself having the world speak to me when I move through it. Uh, I also find myself looking at the way the world's moving. And I'm gonna give you a couple of stories. I, uh, in 2007, I believe, uh, Obama was running for president and it was the uh, Democratic National Convention. And the keynote speaker was Julian Castro, who we all know here from San Antonio. And it occurred to me that there was a shift change happening, that we suddenly, the demographic was changing. And I was inspired to make a t-shirt, I call it my, uh, I almost wore it today, but then I thought, in these times, we should just talk about it. Uh, and everybody should talk about it. Um, anyway, so it said, it occurred to me that the t-shirt should say, brown is the new white. In other words, the brown was coming up to take over some political movement that I felt was happening. So I felt like I needed to make this t-shirt and that too became a piece. So we fast forward to the last presidential election and I was inspired to make a t-shirt that says, making America brown again. <laughs> so, so these are the kinds of things that come to me. And these particular works are part of those processes too. And I can speak to some of them. And I'm going to pick the, Dom, can I pick this up? So this one here is the idea that you have to look. And it actually says in Spanish, te estoy buscando, I'm looking for you. And it came first two reasons. Uh, we, I lost a dear friend, Katie Pell, so the idea that I would never see her again was kind of in the forefront of my mind. But then, of course, at the time, before we had all this craziness go on in the world, we had all the border issues with the children that are still being locked up, and that oftentimes people get lost in between that line, or literally and physically, but then people also get lost in between that line as for instance, for me, who I grew up on the border, that in between. So you're always looking backward and forward. You're looking in different ways because you have two languages, you have two cultures, and just living on this thin line, which we are now all sharing a thin line. So that was inspired by that. The mask is hard. Um, and I did this new process. I always, I've been using vinyl, signed vinyl, to make my work for a while. But I wanted to make this new process where you actually pulled away the language from the surface and that it was still there, but you were pulling away the language and you suddenly had white on white, which if you, and then you also, you can't always see it, so you have to look. So the story was scandal, so you're looking for it. This particular piece 
just came to me when I was sitting on the couch one evening with, with Nate. I think it was winter time. But it was also, time is also, as Patricia said, very much part of my work. And this was inspired by the, by the fact that I was in Berlin and had a residency and had time to sit. So this made me realize that you just have to take a breath and wait for some things to come to you. So I always, so that's why beauty and time, you just have to hear it. So this idea of hearing and seeing and time all move together for me as I move through the world. So those things are always jumping back and forth for me. Well, this, this was just riffing on language for me that comes back and forth. But this one was inspired, of course, Gambio Change, and I used the Coca-Cola symbol just to push it a little further uh, commercially, I guess, and just the idea that, that imagery is so uh, readily available for you to think Coca-Cola. But uh, this was before we had all this craziness, but this was because I was watching the uh, debates, the presidential debates, and just that what that was, what was being said, how it was being said, was there any change really happening? So this is me asking and demanding change in the times we're in. So all this work was made before the world really changed. So the idea th that these things are always present and now it's just that you're, they're on the surface now. So now we all see them and you don't have to, no, no tienes que buscarlos, you don't have to look for them. They're right in your face. So all these things are always there and it's up to us to figure out how to impact the world with whatever needs to be said or changed. So, any questions? <laughs> So I'm going to talk about, I'm going to introduce Norma. Just hold it. Uh, a few words about uh, someone that I casually call Norma, who also has been a mentor to me. Uh, Dr. Norma Liacantu is the Noreen and Frank Markinson Distinguished Professor of the Humanities, Modern Languages and Literatures at Trinity University. She's a scholar that focuses her work on issues of borders and boundaries, whether in academic disciplines or the geopolitical borderlands of Mexico and the United States, all through a Chicana feminist theoretical lens. She writes poetry and prose also with a focus on the borderlands and heavily rooted in the cultural traditions of the region. She passionately believes that wars have power and that literature has the potential to create the change we need. I'm just gonna read uh, one of the, my favorite passages of her beautiful and insightful essay that I'm very jealous <laughs> of. I wish I can have somebody write about me um, the way you wrote about Ethel. Um, Ethel Shipton, a woman of vision whose critical artistic eye looks deep and finds words in images and images in words. To enter Shipton's artistic vision, you need language. And to understand her language, you need images. The two in a recursive dance shape, meaning shape life, give, it, give meaning to her art, her world. Often the images will strip, strip to the very essential lines, clean and sharp, figure shape with duct tape, a few simple lines, lines and voila, a ladder appears leading up to a window or going nowhere like life sometimes. Norma, thank you for your contribution and for all you do to give voice to the voiceless and for bringing the rich life of La Frontera to a bigger audience. Would you like to say a few words? First of all, I'd like to invoke the spirits of this place that is that we see the art gallery as their permission for what we're doing and thank them for having us here and welcoming us. It's always a welcoming space. It's always a joy to be here. Thank you all for being here and thank you Ethel for your beautiful work. Thank you for providing the space, Patricia. When I, Patricia approached me about writing the essay, I was a little confused. I'm not an art critic or art historian, but I love art and I've known Ethel for a long time. Actually about 20 years when I moved here, but I knew her mother for far longer in Laredo. 
And so when I was tasked with writing the essay, I did my usual procrastinating, <laughs> walked around mulling it, thinking about it. We met, we had an interview, a formal interview that I didn't record, I found <laughs> out later. <laughs> and then I thought, well, I'm just gonna jump right in. And I, the words just flowed. And I invoked your mom. I think your mom was right by me when I was writing. And maybe that's what made you cry. Maybe that's <laughs> because she was such a powerful, giving, loving person. And when I met her in Laredo, she was already working at the um, monastery where the monks were. And so it was a different kind of relationship than her previous life. <laughs> um, but I know, I had known about her for a long time. So I think this, the essay, in my view, captures the essence of that in-between place, that Nepantla, as the Aztecs called that in-between space of any two, when any two things come together. And the border is especially so geographically, spiritually, definitely culturally. I mean, you can have breakfast tacos in San Antonio and mariachis in Laredo. <laughs> so there is a difference. And I think that spirit of that in-betweenness is what comes through to me in Ethel's work. It's not just the images, it's not just the words and the language, it's both together that create a third space. And that's kind of where I anchored the essay. Uh, the other thing is I came to the exhibit, the One Woman Show, and I was just blown away because I had just come back from Portugal and I had seen graffiti in English <laughs> on the walls and I thought, oh, and that here was Ethel using that from Berlin to create art. And I thought it was just fabulous. So I'm not going to say much more other than I really appreciate the opportunity for writing the essay. Uh, I know I've been wanting to write about Ann Wallace for a long time. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> Because when we were working together with Amnesty International and Laredo and with the Refugee Assistance Center back in the 80s, when we had also similar situation with people coming through and being incarcerated in the detention center in Laredo, uh, her artwork was speaking to me. And so I, I have notes from all the way back there of all the exhibits that I've been to. Um, but I really think that the images convey one reality, the words another. And I, as a writer, honor and respect those of you who are artists and can do it with the images. So, muchas gracias. It's really been an honor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know. <laughs> do we have any questions? Of anybody in the room? Thank you for invoking the spirits. I hope it's all good spirits. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, as uh, all the catalogs that the gallery publishes, they're all also online. You can download them, so you can write, you, you can read the essay, you can see the images. That's one of the things that uh, the gallery does, you know, makes available for anybody to download a catalog that the gallery has published. We try to do that with all the solo and two-person shows. Um, that's kind of the, the goal, and sometimes we do it for groups, it all depends, but um, anyway, I, will, I want to thank you again for coming, and let's hope that you, we're taking a break next Saturday because it's July 4th, uh, but the following Saturday, the 11, July 11, uh, we're very excited, we have um, Katie Pellas, you know, died in December, as her daughter has agreed to come and talk about her mom's work, and that's going to be very special, so thank you all very much. And be safe and wear your mask. <laughs> Wash your hands. <laughs>